Hello and welcome to PPM6 TV. Today we're going to have a look at this little baby, which is a Sanken CSM1 Super Cardioid Mic. Well, I think we should be the judge of that. Um, Sanken actually describe it as a short shotgun mic. And uh, it's very new on the market. And I thought it would be a good uh, opportunity to find out what's missing. Well, the first <laughs> and maybe the most glaring omission is... There's no clip. Where's my clip, Sankin? Um, you get uh, your lovely microphone, and it is uh, rather cute and lovely, as you, as you, I'm sure you'd agree. And uh, you also get um, a windshield, which is okay. I mean, you, you're not going to stand on a cliff edge and do the business with this, um, but at least it's something. And what I would appreciate is if, uh, you know, they'd given me a clip just to get me going. Anyway, enough of my ranting. Um, you do get some paperwork, as you can see, and um, you get a frequency response curve that um, uh, doesn't show anything, um, you know, out of the ordinary. It's uh, It's got a little peak at about 8K, and then it rolls off gradually down down towards 20 at that end. And and at this end, there's a, there's a roll off um, uh, below 100, and... Um, you know, it's quite well down. I think it's uh, over 10 dB down at uh, at 50. So it's not, what's missing? It's not the ruler flat response, you know, of a Sherps or a Sennheiser MKH-50. On the other hand, what's also missing is a big chunk of the price of a Sherps or um, an MKH-50. As uh, I think it retails in the UK for about £750. So that's, you know, getting on for half the price. Now, uh, Sennheiser do have... Um, an 80, uh, 80 50, which um, would be a competitor. But even that's, you know, probably a good third uh, more expensive. So looking for something to compare it with, um, I dug out my um, uh, Neumann KM185, which is a studio mic, I understand that, um, but is a, is, a, is a great sounding microphone and um, is also a, well, it's not a super cardioid, it's a hypercardioid. And uh, it's, it's, it's a good thing to, to gauge the quality with. Now, uh, the second thing you notice after you've got over the clip shock is that actually there is an interference tube on the front of this. Um, a Neumann 185 or most hypercardioids don't have an interference tube, but there is a short interference tube on the front of the, uh, of the Sankin. And that, I guess, is to give it more suck. Um, that does raise one concern, which is indoors, will you get... Um, uh, interference effects, phasing mostly, um, when used uh, near surfaces and walls and ceilings and so forth, which is why people move away from a classic gun mic indoors um, in the first place. So um, we'll, have, we'll have a little uh, think about that. Um, uh, I, I guess not much else to say. It's, it's, it's nicely put together. It's very light. It weighs only 55 grams. Um, it needs a full uh, 48 volts of um, phantom power and um, it's uh, it's um, I think it's a little bit of a bargain the the, the KM185 bless it is, is is very good but if I do that um, you'll hear that uh, you know it's very prone to mechanical stuff if I was to stick it in a boom and uh, and, and whoosh it it would certainly whoosh and when when I've done the same with both the mics together what's missing from this is a lot of the mechanical noise um, that you would get on a studio mic, which of course is what you'd expect. This is a location mic, but it just shows that Sankin's engineers have done a good job. So what does it sound like? Well, uh, give me a moment and I'll put it right there um, and um, we'll uh, we'll try that. Oh, just before I do, a word about clips. Sorry to bang on about clips, but um, I mean, I'm going to probably stick it in the classic uh, AKG SA40 um, which, which I mean, just just for holding a microphone is a, is, is a wonderful bit of kit, but it does fit in um, uh, not in this one because the the liars are too far apart. But it does fit in uh, some of the uh, Rycoat Envision. I think it's the Envision Six Heavy. Um, I think is the one you want, and that will get you started at a reasonable price. With a, I think there's a matching softy. If you want killer windshields, then um, you're going to need a Rycote Cyclone or a uh, Sinella Cozy. There's a lovely uh, video on the Sinella, uh, as you'd expect from the French, very arty, but also very informative. And uh, they're, they're great solutions, but they're costing, you know, almost two thirds of the price of the microphone. 
Um, so you may want to get st- you may want to get started with an Envision uh, six and a, and a and a softy. Anyway, that's enough of me talking. Well, no, it's not. But I mean, it's enough of me talking just into this. I'm going to swap the mics over, and uh, you can hear what it sounds like. Back in a second. Right. So here we are back with the um, CSM1 in rep- uh, in place of my KM185. And that reminded me, as I set it up, one of the very distinctive things about the Sankin is it's a, it's a back electret, uh, pre-polarized, and um, it's very loud. <laughs> when, I, uh, when I plugged them both into um, an RME mic amp, I noticed that I was using almost 10 dB um, less gain on the Sankin than I was on the Neumann. Now, my Neumann's probably had a hard life, and maybe it's lost a little bit in, uh, uh, in translation of, of many years' work. But uh, it's a very loud mic. Now, that, th- th- there's two things to be said there. One, I guess that's a good thing. You, um, you want to uh, 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 avoid mic amp noise, but I think electrets have higher self-noise. I'm not an expert in those, uh, you know, the, the innards of microphones. Um, but yeah, a little bit more self-noise, but um, uh, less noise from your, um, uh, your mic amps. But do beware when you plug it in, if you've just had something ordinary in there first, it will be quite loud. So here we are. Um, listening to it i listening quite extensively i mean i think there is a tighter it is a bit tighter than the than than the hypercardioid i'm not sure it's massively tighter but but i think it is it is audible um i i thought that indoors in in a this room's not too bad but but um in a in a more reflective room that maybe the bass held up a little bit better on the the 185 which may have been you know not the bass holding up better but phasing effect i don't know it certainly doesn't sound um uh, disastrous off mic it's nice and smooth um I, I i've got a lot of time for it and and at the price um i mean it's a little bit more expensive than a than a 185 but then you're buying a a, a look a mic for location that's why you're buying it you're not buying it for studio although having said that um i managed to get it out on an orchestral gig and uh, they stuck it on the woodwinds of the uh, national orchestra of wales and it held up absolutely fine now you think about it normally um that would be taking the place of a sherps or a dpa or a high-end sennheiser and that's some um, high praise indeed so um there, there you have it uh what's missing from it ha the clip a little bit of the top end a little bit of the bottom end a lot of mechanical noise is missing which is which is good news all in all i think if you're into location sound and um, you're looking for uh, something to use indoors, or you're looking just for a hypercardioid um, type microphone, the Sankin should be on your listen list. Well done, Sankin. Um, Come back to PPM6 TV uh, for more as soon as you can. Enjoy your day. Thanks now.